each other. Well, the governor of Massachusetts then says, well, if they won't sell us any property, the state or the colony will just take it. It's called eminent domain. For the common good, they will take property. So he takes, seizes this property in this corner right next door to this old burial ground, which is not was not part of this church. This is just the oldest burial ground in, in Boston, I believe, or the second oldest. Now, they built a church here, but before they could build it, they now demanded, the Anglicans did, the keys to the old South Meeting House, where the Puritans used to hold church services. The Puritans had to turn over the keys to the governor under penalty of law. When the Anglicans got the keys to that Puritan church, they refused to allow the Puritans to worship on Sundays until after they were done with their services. So the Anglicans would go in, have their services, take their time getting out, and the Puritans were all standing around waiting to get in. But eventually they built the first chapel here. Now there was an old Puritan law that even the governor couldn't get around. And that was, if a church other than a Puritan church was built in Boston, if ever the walls were to come down of that church, that property would now belong to the Puritan church. And so when they built the first chapel here, they didn't know what to do. If we tear it down to build a bigger chapel, they'll seize this property. So with the current chapel still there, they built this chapel around the original chapel. So they could continue holding services, they wouldn't lose their property. And when this chapel was finished, they went inside, tore down the old chapel, and pushed all the wood and stuff out through the windows. <laughs> I thought you would find that part of the story Very cool. kind, of, you, kind of interesting. <laughs> The bell up there was the last bell. It was uh, made by Paul Revere, crafted in uh, 1816. Today it's a Unitarian church. Now this burial ground is the burial ground of John Winthrop. Again, he came over with the first Puritans in 1629. There's nobody older than him buried here. William Dawes, we heard about the midnight ride of Paul Revere. William Dawes, the other guy, he is buried here. This is the oldest cemetery in Boston. However, if you look at it, it looks like you can tell where people are buried. No. All you can tell up here is where the headstones are for thousands of people. Because they, the headstones are not where people are buried. Okay, it was set up here to make it look more orderly like this. People are actually buried here four deep. Sometimes standing up. And the headstones have been moved to more orderly rows. So they do not represent the actual burial site. This graveyard was full by the year 1660. So a good 115 years before the Declaration of Independence, it was already full. You're looking at some really old tombstones here. Uh, the Joseph Tapping headstone, if you can find it, that will be a challenge for you over the next couple of minutes. It's considered to be amongst the most be beautiful headstones in Boston. There's also the grave of a woman I'd like you to look for. Her name is Mary Chilton. Okay, Mary Chilton, who according to legend, was the first pilgrim to touch land in America. And then another woman who's even more interesting, Elizabeth Payne, P-A-I-N. Try to find her grave. Why? She inspired, those of you into literature, inspired a character named Hester Prynne. And Hester Prynne was the main character in The Scarlet Letter by Hawthorne. Over here, what is this? That is from the original oldest subway system in America, Boston subway system, and that was one of the airplanes. It was built in 1898. So, you can find Mary Prince. See if you can find uh, 